Hello, hello. Every now and then, some companies are actually trading in the stock market. A lot of people are talking about them. And one of these companies is uh, the very, very small company named Aterian. Is actually being discussed, discussed quite a lot right now. You will see that this is a very small company having 156 employees. And look at this beta here. This means that the company is very volatile. It's going up and down a lot. And it's a very recent IPO. Back in 2019 is when this happened. Now this is, a, as you can see here, a consumer cyclical sector and the industry is furnishings, fixtures and appliances. It's cyclical because uh, it is a cycle. I mean, when people are actually having money, they tend to buy these things, they tend to buy industry, furnishings, appliances and things of that sort. When an economy is in a slump, people tend to avoid these things. So let's take a little bit of a closer look now and uh, see what's actually happening in terms of the stock analysis here. Let's see what our tool is going to show us, whether this is an interesting small cap, very small cap company to actually buy. This is a 12, $200 million company right now. And what is what is very, very, very interesting here is one of the things that you can very easily notice here is the one year high. It was $32, which means that if you go back one year, you're going to notice that the price of the stock was actually much, much higher here. And um, even before one year in 2021 January around or February over here, it's more than a year. It actually was even more $41 over here, as you can see. So it's down tremendously and it, uh, it needs to go back 800%. It needs to go up 800% in order to reach its previous high of $32, as you'll see here. That is insane. So 32 is actually uh, the one year high and we're currently sitting at 3.4. This kind of value here tells you that we need an increase of 800% of this value in order to reach uh, the, the one year high. So we're down a lot. So the max of the company, again, you will see had uh, a massive increase and then a massive downturn it happens a lot with uh, companies that are overvalued. Uh, you know, this is uh, a thing that uh, will eventually more than likely happen with companies that are not uh, doing that well. They are not doing well financially and it's all about uh, traders flocking in and uh, artificially sort of like raising the price. But now it's, it is a little bit of a trend and uh, what's happening in the last month, it is a little bit higher as you'll see. And uh, the last win again, a uh, week uh, from 2.3 here to uh, 3.4. And this is why people are actually talking about it and it seems like it's um, it's a little bit of a trendy stock right now. But let's take a look at what's going on with the company. The P ratio is negative, so the company is actually losing money, no earnings uh, being made here. And uh, the price to free cash flow also negative. Again, the company is losing money, at least they were making money back in 2020. I guess uh, the pandemic actually hurt them a lot. This is when the company started uh, really, really deterior deteriorating and the stock price uh, really fell off a cliff. Uh, the free cash flow uh, divided by the total liabilities is negative because the free cash flow is negative. So when, whenever that happens, uh, we know that uh, this is a bad sign, generally speaking, and it doesn't really affect um, this uh, actual, there is very specific metric. It's uh, bad already because it's negative. And so the, the revenue growth of the company is at least good, but we're talking about very small revenues. So 36 million to 247 million. It's great growth, but we're not talking about billions here, right? So you need to remember that this is a very, very small company. And the big problem is that their net income growth is actually going down even as the revenue increases, and that's a bad sign. Same thing for the free cash flow. It is uh, actually uh, decreasing and it's actually negative. And uh, look at the outstanding shares. They keep issuing shares and uh, even now they're doing it as the stock price is down. They keep, uh, you know, they keep actually uh, diluting investors uh, every year and uh, more and more as the years progress. So this is an insane amount of dilution going on here. Terrible for somebody investing in the company. And this is probably why the company has uh, that, that much equity here, just because they are selling a lot of, uh, they're getting a lot of money from uh, you know, people willing to buy this thing. But uh, yeah, the margins here are negative, as you would kind of expect. The return on equity is much negative. Yeah, this is not looking great. So let's take a little bit of a closer look now at the financial statements. I, what I kind of want to see is how the net income is actually trending. And you will see here 23, 31, 58, 63, 236, but all in the negative. So massive, massive losses here. And I'm pretty sure if we take a look at the balance sheet, it's all going to be about uh, cash added from uh, people who bought the stock. 
and uh, you can kind of see that here already the additional paid in capital 47 76 140 216 653 so people keep on buying this thing and uh, you know financing the company uh, even though it's doing terribly bad and uh, the total equity has been increasing because of that pretty much now the cash flow statement of the company we also expect it to be negative and the operating income is, is actually heavily in the negative as we examined already and uh, as you'll see here it's uh, it's very very negative and um, the investing activities slightly negative here the, the company is still investing a little bit but the financing they're getting a little bit of, a little bit of debt as you can see over here but uh, the big thing is the free cash flow negative 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 slightly positive here and then negative again so massive decreases and massive declines all right so the next thing even if we take a look at our stock evaluation tool here that's gonna be a tough thing to do i mean the revenue is positive so we can project it with positive numbers so we can go maybe uh, let's go 15 uh, 17 and 19 but look at the net income margins these are all negative and whenever that happens well we're, we're actually having to tackle with uh, a company that is not profitable and in this case uh, what we could do is actually project what we think the company will be making if they actually are about to reach profitability soon now is, does that seem to be the case to you because to my to me it does not this is minus 95 percent for the net income margin of the company so losing more and more net income as you can see compared to its revenue which is terribly bad and the free cash flow follows with the free cash flow margin which um, actually has been positive at least and um, that's a little bit of a good thing but the thing is the net income margin which is the profit of the company because the free cash flow can also be uh, affected by lots of different things and um, this can actually be slightly positive and actually make it make it a positive value here and that's uh, that's what's happening here but um, the net income margin that we could use like what we could, could we go with like uh, let's say 10 i don't know 10 20 and 30 extremely confident i mean again these are negative companies not profitable let's just project that at some point it will become profitable and uh, then give it a 40 50 and 60 here and a 30 percent return it's gonna uh, give us when i hit calculate a value of uh, 3 for the low one, a value of medium, a value of 10 for medium and a value of 20 for high. But remember, we used extremely, extremely uh, positive uh, margins here. More than likely, we could go with something like 1, 2 and 3 here and still be very, very confident. And uh, yeah, this I think it's more like it. And um, even this is uh, much, much confident, right? Because again, we don't have positive income margins here, not even close really this is uh, much in in negative territory here so we're not even close to this one frankly speaking again i projected something extremely confident and even one two three is extremely confident so even these values here are very confident so practically speaking this is uh, to my eyes uh, a penny stock in the maybe in the lower tens or something who knows i mean this is uh, this is terrible here what i'm saying so yeah uh just wanted to make this video because the um, uh, the company is re really trending right now i'm pretty sure many people could be looking at this trend and potentially think of buying this stock and uh, i want you to take a look at the financials and decide for yourself uh, take a look at this analysis and uh, you'll see that uh, it's probably not a good idea unless you are willing to trade it and uh, like hold it for a few days or so Hope you enjoyed the video, if that helped you a little bit, if that gave you some ideas and you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe if you're not a subscriber, because at some point I will give you access to this tool, I will let you know how to get it. And in the meantime, take a look at this video that I made earlier, it's about Tesla and how, why you need to be careful about potentially buying Tesla, especially right now at its current valuation. Thank you for watching, see you soon, bye bye.